Hello! Today we are going to be drawing an astronaut. You will want something to draw with, whether it is a marker, a pen, a pencil, a colored pencil, a crayon. Go ahead and get out your writing tool. You may even want to start by gathering a few extra materials. And the materials for this project that are extra is a set of watercolor. Uh, you can use a pan watercolor set. Uh, you're going to want a paintbrush, whether you use a small round paintbrush or a larger round paintbrush. This is a number 10. And I have also chosen to use a flat paintbrush. This is a three quarter inch flat. All right. You will want some plastic wrap that you would find in the kitchen. If you don't have plastic wrap, a plastic bag, like a grocery sack would work just fine. All right. Let's get started on this astronaut. I am going to start with a lid to trace a circle for my astronaut's head. You do not have to use anything to trace with. You can go with this just freehand. Um, but I find that with my students in the classroom, it is it gives a little bit more confidence if there is something to trace. So I'm going to begin with my lid and make a nice traced circle around the lid. There we go. Okay. Once we have a circle, we are going to add some details inside the circle for the astronaut's face shield. So I'm going to start kind of over on the left hand side and I'm going to make a almost a flattened out letter U line. Once I have this line added in, I'm going to close the top with a curved line. And I'm going to add two extra lines going from the corner here up toward the top of my circle. Now, I've looked up some images of astronaut suits and what you might call a space suit. And you will see that the various space suits have some kind of camera located on them. So we're going to add two little C shapes on both sides. They are not ears. These are parts of the camera. And I might even say maybe a headset or just an extra piece that goes along with the pressure uh, that a spacesuit gives to the astronaut wearing it. Okay. Now inside the larger space, I'm going to make two circles. All right. And I'm going to add a little area that is like a glare from a light on this face shield. We're not adding a face. Um, if you would like to add a face, go ahead, feel free, add a face. I'm just going to add some curves right over here as if light is shining on the astronaut shield. Okay. So I have my helmet. Now I'm going to start working my way down where the helmet is attached to the rest of the astronaut's suit. So I'm gonna start with a little C shape down here at the bottom of the circle on the left. And I'm gonna make one over here on the right side as well. And close that space. All right, now I'm going to make a series of lines for the shoulders connecting to the arms of the spacesuit. So I'm going to start over here on the left hand side, not exactly down here at the bottom, up in the middle of the C-shaped area, and make a curved line out to the left, 
and a short curved line out to the right. Okay, now we're going to add a space. So it looks as if the astronaut's arms can freely move and have a little bit more round movement happening. Okay, so right here at the end of this line, we're gonna make a curved line. This is gonna connect the top of the shoulder to the armpit. And I'm just gonna make a line that connects from my C shape down to the bottom of my curved line. Do the same thing over here to the right side. Okay, so I have some shoulders on my astronaut. Now I'm going to work with some wavy lines to make the astronaut's arms. Uh, and that's because the suit is a little bit puffier. It's not skin tight or very fitting. Uh, it is a little bit puffier around the arms of the astronaut. So I'm going to begin with the underneath side of this left arm, right down here at the bottom point of this triangular shape. And I'm going to make a very small wavy line. It doesn't need to be too long. And I'm going to make the top portion starting at this top corner of my triangular shape. And make a wavy line. I want this one to kind of curve down. There we go. Okay. Now I'm going to attach the cuff of the sleeve and we're, we can add the gloved hand on this left hand side. We'll finish this side first. Okay, so I'm going to make a connection here and I'm going to make two C shapes that come down. They do not need to be large. This is just the cuff of the sleeve portion to the glove. There we go. Okay, now for this hand, I'm going to make this hand on the astronaut look as if it is closed. Um, so it's not going to be open. If you want your hand to look open, go ahead and do so. Four fingers, one thumb. I'm going to go ahead and make mine look like it's closed, just showing the four knuckles. All right, so where the bottom of my C shapes come down, I'm going to make one bump looks kind of like a hook make a second one there's a letter u a third one there's a letter u and my fourth one is going to come right back up to here all right there is my clenched hand if you want to make yours a little bit tighter close there go for it all right, we're going to work on this hand on the right hand side, and I'm actually gonna make this hand look as if it is raised up and waving. So here we go. I'm gonna begin with a short line, again using a wavy line. So I'm gonna come right up here at this top corner of this triangular shape on the right side. I'll make a little wavy line say maybe a fourth of an inch or uh, maybe a half an inch. All right, not too technical there. All right, there's a little wavy line. And this time I'll bring a wavy line that comes down, almost like I'm making a square. But I'm gonna stop a little shy of closing the square. All right, so this is the upper portion of the arm and the forearm, the lower portion of the arm, is going to be here. Okay, so our hand is going to be up. I'm going to go ahead and make part of the cuff of this right arm over here. Okay. It doesn't need to be too wide. I think I like that right like it is. And now I'm going to go from this bottom point of the triangular shape wavy line down, curve up, and close right there at the end of my straight line. All right, this is gonna give me my astronaut's arm. 
my right side drawing the astronaut's left arm. There we go. Looks like I kind of have this crazy mistake going on over here, but no worries. We're getting ready to add the waving hand. So two C shapes. So here's a C shape or a curve line. Here's a C shape or a curve line and close that line right there. Now we're going to make the hand give a little wave. So this first line is going to look sort of like a letter R. If you've been in class with me before, you will know that when I give directions on certain drawings, I will use familiar items and those are typically shapes and letters. We also talk a lot about the different styles of lines that can be used. All right, so I have my letter R. Now I'm going to continue this letter R to make it look like a letter J. So now my letter R is going to hook back up. And that's going to give me the first finger on my astronaut's hand. So I know where I'm going to. I'm going to come make this outside portion of the hand. I don't really need the line to go straight up, but I am going to have it angle out to my right side just a little bit. Here we go. Now these fingers are open. They are going to be a little bit longer than these on this side because remember this side over here is clenched. Okay, so I'm gonna make one bump, connect it, two, three, four. There we go. They're a little lopsided. You can come back in and clean them up if you feel like you need to. There we go. All right. I think this will suffice just perfectly fine. All right. Working our way down the torso of the astronaut into the legs and finally the feet. So let's work on the sides of the astronaut. These lines do not have to be really wavy like the arms. They do not have to be perfectly straight either. I'm going to give a little bit of wave to them. Bring my line down and stop just below where the hand on this side is at. Do the same thing over here to the right side. There we go. Okay. So the next series of lines, we're going to add two curves. If you look up astronaut spacesuits, you're going to see that it almost looks like they have a pair of shorts on and then pants underneath of them. So we're going to make two lines to make it look like it's the bottom of these shorts portion of the spacesuit. Starting here on my right, make a curved line into the middle. Same thing over here on the left, curve line into the middle. You can bring these down and close the space. I'm just going to draw a little straight line. Okay. I'm going to mimic this line underneath the curve. There's one on the right. Do the same thing over here. One on the left. Okay. Now close up the ends. There we go. So it's almost like right now we have no pants, uh, no legs, actually. We have the bottoms of the shorts, but no legs. All right. Let's work on the legs. Again, I'm making wavy lines. They don't have to be terribly long. Okay. He's a little bit shorter looking. Okay. So go over here to the right side. This would be the inside of the legs. And now we'll work on the outside of the legs. Narrowing as I come down to the bottom where the ankles are at. Okay, so I'm going to close the ends of these legs with two slightly curved lines. There we go. And I'm going to make the feet um, look like they have pushed down. So we're going to make two U shapes here on the bottom. 
Our astronaut has jumped in outer space. There we go. Okay, that, that looks a little short. That's all right. Okay, dokie. Let's make some little pieces up here on the inside of the suit. Again, I encourage you to look up some images of astronaut spacesuits. Kind of get your own idea. You can change this astronaut to look how you want it to be. It does not have to stay exactly the way I am drawing. Start to develop your own style. All right. So I added two blocky C shapes or curved lines over here on the ins outside of this box. I want to make these curved S shaped lines, make it look like there are some tubes running behind the astronaut. Okay. So yes, I encourage you look up pictures, draw from what you are seeing and come up with your own style. Let's see, I'm gonna add some straps up here. When you're drawing, you may, you know, find several images and, you know, take a, a look at, you know, what does the head look like? What do the legs look like? What about the arms, the hands? Are there extra details that you would like to add to your picture? All of these extra details are just for fun. You can get really specific. There we go. All right. If I wanted to keep going, I could make this astronaut have a pack on the back so that they were flying around in space around their space shuttle um, or the space station. Uh, you can make it look like there's an outfit for a moon landing or just come up with something on your very own. All right, so that is the astronaut. You can add a background, you can color it, paint it, uh, do what you wish to with it. So right now I'm actually going to slide this one to the side and I have made an astronaut that I've already added some paint into the mask and I put some plastic wrap on this mask. I'm just peeling this off. It's had a chance to start to dry and I use just regular printer paper and you can see how with the regular printer paper, the watercolor has bled outside of my face shield. But look how cool that is on the face shield with those lines blending my colors together. I could clean this up with a colored pencil, a crayon, a oil pastel, or I could just add to it. All right, so there is my astronaut. And when you're using your watercolors, you can paint on any paper surface. Just know the thinner the paper, the more the paint is going to really bleed into the fibers of the paper. Now this is a kid's paint paper. So the paper is thicker and it is meant to hold uh, paint and watercolors a lot better than a plain printer paper. All right, here is my setup. I have a tray that used to be a Lunchable and I have placed water in two of the dishes and a paper towel folded up in another dish. That gives me a clean water, a water that's kind of dirty. I can use this water if I want to and a place to clean my brush off. All right, the next thing you're going to want to do is get out your paints and we want to wake our paint set up. So just get a little bit of water and take your paint set. Now mine have been used already, but take your water and just go around the inside of the brim just enough to give the paint um, a drink and to start to wake that 
paint up. It helps bring the colors and make them softer to use. All right, now for my project, I could use this smaller round size brush and it will take a lot more effort to fill in the color on my paper, okay? I don't have to paint real slowly. I can just hold my paintbrush back here toward the end of the handle and let my paintbrush move sideways, back and forth here across my paper. I like to leave a little bit of puddly areas on this. You may want your work to go a little bit faster. And in that case, you're going to want to use a larger brush. And for me, I've chosen this flat brush just to get the color on my paper rather quickly. Now, the more water you use, the thinner the transparency of the color is going to look. Okay, it might not be really vibrant very thinned out and light. Uh, the more paint you use, okay, it gets a little bit sticky, so you don't want too much, but the vibrancy of the color is going to show up. So I'm just going to add my color across my paper. I can make blots, blotches, little spots, layer it, Come back over top. All right. I'll let that paint sit on top of my paper. I'm going to quickly add in some of my purple, which looks a little bit more like magenta. Oh, I must have still had some blue in my paintbrush. I didn't clean it out very well. So it has that deeper purple color. Otherwise, it would have remained with this lighter magenta color. All right. And when it mixes in with the blue on the paper, you will start to see that deeper purple come through. All right. You do not have to do all of the edges of your paper. So I have blue. I have the purple or magenta and I'm going to just add this around. Now for fun, I'm going to make this kind of like an outer space scene or like a nebula. Look up what a nebula is. You will be very interested to see some really cool pictures. So I'm also gonna add some black to my image. Now I don't need a lot of black. Just enough to kind of shade my colors. So I'm creating a deeper shaded color. Plus I think it makes it a little bit more spacey. All right, now here's the really cool and exciting part. We're gonna take some Saran Wrap You don't need a whole lot. Just enough to cover the surface of your picture. And place that saran wrap right on top of the wet watercolor. Let that sink in. Look at these wrinkles that are formed underneath of the watercolor. You're gonna wanna set this aside to dry before peeling it off. So this one was done on a thinner craft paper, but I still start to get some of that same effect with the saran wrap or the plastic wrap. You can see these really cool textured lines. So once I have this, oh, where'd my little astronaut go? We lost my little astronaut guy, there he is. I can add my astronaut to my space and it looks as if I'm getting this reflection of outer space on my astronaut's helmet there. Have a lot of fun with this project. Go to NASA's website and you can see 
Uh, it just meant my computer shut down. You can see some really cool images from NASA. And if you type in um, in a search, you can look up NASA Storytime. And it's going to tell you all about what NASA is doing by having astronauts read stories from outer space. You can click on a link or you can also go to storytimefromspace.com. And there are, I think, nine different books that have been read. I could be wrong on that number. It's changing uh, quite often. Um, so you can go through, check out some of these books, have an astronaut read to you, and you have your really cool project to go along with it. Enjoy!